Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my video presentation. My name is Yap Chi Wen, and I'm the instructor for InfoSight. This topic, I'm going to talk about ISIS. So first, we look into what is ISIS. Uh, we look into how the ISIS work in theory. And um, ISIS is mainly used in large network, uh, mainly in the service provider. The objective of this um, uh, slide here, we look into the principle of ISIS. We will look into Huawei command on how to configure ISIS based on the Huawei VRP, uh, the troubleshooting on the ISIS, some of the enhanced features of the ISIS, and we look into HCIE ISIS SM scale. All right, so some of the topic that we are going to cover, the principle, the command, the troubleshooting, case study, and the exam preparation. Now, some of the concept that we are going to cover. All right, so some of the point here, we are going to start with the basic concept of ISIS, the principle, the characteristic of ISIS, how ISIS converge, and how they synchronize their ISDB. What are the features uh, beside the uh, standard features on ISIS? And we also will look into some of the management features on the ISIS. Now let's start with the basic concept of ISIS as well as the ISIS history. Now ISIS stands for um, Intermediate System to Intermediate System. All right, as you can see from here that ISIS is a OSI standard and it's reside in the network layer. So you can see that we have the ISIS, we have ESIS. Uh, ES basically meant end system. Whereas IS refer to intermediate system. So in our course, we are going to concentrate on the ISIS, uh, not the ESIS. Um, ISIS, uh, originally, they actually meant for this uh, connectionless network services. Okay, we call it as uh, CLNS. And uh, it applied to a protocol called CLNP, connectionless network protocol. Okay, so um, some of the characteristic of the ISIS and uh, ISIS is actually work in the data link as well. All right. When we look into the integrated ISIS, we are running ISIS in an TCP IP environment. So we call this as an integrated ISIS. In our study, we are going to look into purely IP base and not CLNS or CLNP. All right. Let's look into the uh, topology of ISIS. Now, as you can see from here, I have the number here. This is the area, and this is our network entity number. And you take note that the network entity here is 47001, and this is 47002, 3, and so on and so forth. So we have 4 here, and we have 5. So basically, it's referring to different area. Now, first, when we look into the ISIS, you notice that those L2, we term that as a backbone. Okay, those are our backbone uh, router. This is pure backbone. Now, you notice that this L1, L2, we call it as a level 1, level 2 router. So, in ISIS, we have a router that perform as level 1 and level 2. So if let's say we term it loosely, this is similar to OSBF area border router. Okay, and this is our backbone router. Okay, now you notice that I also have another router here that is purely uh, L1. So this is a non backbone router. Okay or we call it as an internal router. So if you want to make an analogy that is similar to OSPF, but I'll just give you an example that this is how it works. If let's say if it's in uh, OSPF as a comparison. So definitely, this is totally different compared to OSPF. Now, first thing you'll notice that in OSPF, we have our router. Let's say if this is the OSPF router, we will have uh, area zero here and area 1 here. So the area is actually being divided on the router itself. Now, difference compared to 
the uh, ISIs, you notice that the area division is on the link. As you can see that this is the division between level 1, level 2, and this is a division between level 1 and level 2. All right, so the division is not on the router, but rather on the link. All right, so this is the overall. If you want to connect the L1 with the backbone, you have to go through the L1, L2. So L2 will transmit this LSP, or in this case, the link state PDU, LSP, from one area to another area. All right. So this is the uh, basic concept of about the uh, o, uh, the ISIs. Now let's look into the ISIs uh, router classification. Now let's just look into this uh, topology. Now we have a uh, area for the seven zero zero one. So all these router R one, R two, and R three belong to this same area. Now you can see that R one is just pure R one. All right. L1, sorry, level 1, and R2 is uh, level 1, so they form a level 1 neighbor. Now, whereas R3 is a level 1, level 2 router. Now, because this is belong to the same area, so even though you can actually use an L2, you still form an L1 uh, neighbor relationship. Okay, so let's look into another example. This example, I have two area. We have 47001 and 47002. All right, let's look into uh, these three router below. R1 is a L1, L2 router. R2 is a L2 router. So you notice that they belong to the same area. And because that this guy only can speak L2, the relationship is L2. So remember that if I have L1, L2 and L2 in the same area, they use L2 to exchange LSP. If I have L2 and L2 in the same area, they will still use L2. So we can use this L2 or level 2 LSP in the same area, or we also can use L1 in the same area. But take note over here is, if I'm going to advertise my LSP in different area or in this case inter area you have to use l2 let's look into this example i have 47001 and 47002 this is an l2 this is l1 l2 they don't use l1 because l1 is within that area so you have to use l2 okay and last let's look into this example so i have 47001 47002 and 47003. Now let's have a look here on router 5. I have L1, L2. I have here L1, L2. Now because that their network is different, they only can pair with L2 relationship. Now this is L1, L2. This is also L1, L2. Now since both of these router can use L1 and L2, their relation pairing will be based on L1 and L2. So they are LSDB. If you do a display LSDB, you will notice that both LSDB will be populated, which is uh, level 1 and level 2. Now, because the router 3 only can use level 2, so we only have a level 2 peering. And um, router 2 is pure L1, so they have L1. And because that router 6 is pure L2 and is different area, you can see that they're just using L2. Okay, so let's just conclude over here. If let's say if it's the same area, we should actually use L1. If let's say you are only capable on L1. But if it's in the same area, you also can use L2. Okay, you can see that in this example, I'm using the same area, I'm using L2. Or if the router are capable on both L1 and L2, and that is the default, by default, the ISIS router will use L1, L2, even within the same area. But between different areas, I have to use L2 only. Okay? Now, next, we look into what we call the network type. Now, generally, in ISIS, we only have two types. The first type is point-to-point, -point, and the second type is a broadcast network. So, over in, in here, we have the point-to-point, 
that is running on PPP and HDLC. So if let's say you're using a serial link, so they would default into point to point. Now another option here is if let's say they detected that this is an Ethernet network, then straight away they are going to use the um, broadcast network. All right. So different compared to OSPF, we do not have point to multi point. All right. We do not have MBMA, non broadcast multi access. So these two we do not have. So we only have point to point and broadcast. So what if if it's a frame relay? If I'm using a frame relay, I only have a two choice. Either I make it as point to point or either I make it as a broadcast. So point to point is where you should actually configure. If let's say you're using a, a frame relay, so you use a point to point. Now, if let's say you are using the uh, ISIs, please take note that in ISIs, they actually send what we call the hello. All right, the hello that is generated by point to point and the broadcast will be different. All right, now later I'm going to touch on this uh, different hello. Now, next, we look into the broadcast link. Now, just like in OSBF, remember that in OSBF we have our DR. Okay, the purpose of a DR is to reduce the number of agency. Now, the concept is similar in ISIs. In ISIs, we call this as a designated intermediate system or what we call DIS. Okay, DIS. Now let's look into this example. Here we have our LAN environment, all right, running on the Ethernet. So let's say this one is my interface. Okay. So all these interfaces are connected through a switch. Okay, physically. Now when they form the agency, one of the router will actually elect themselves as a DIS. Let's say for example, uh, this particular router, let's call it as router 1, is a DIS. Okay, so this guy is going to create what we call the virtual router. Now in this case, instead of four router, you're able to see that there's one extra router, uh, which is a DIS, virtual router, um, is created. And all the routers is going to appear with this, this DIS. So this DIS is working as though that this is a DR. Okay, but in ISIS, we don't term it as DR, we term it as designated intermediate system, DIS. And how can we uh, elect which one is a DIS? All right, so if let's say we look into, um, let's see here. Okay, let's give you one example. If I'm going to have one, two, and three router, and all of these are connecting to a switch, what will happen over here is if let's say this is belong to the same ISIs, same area, okay? Let's say I call it as 47001. Three of them belong to the same 47001. Now, once I enable the interface on the ISIs, they are going to check on the priority. Now, when you enable the ISIs, all the ISIs priority will be zero. Now, if let's say they are all priority zero and there's a tie, they are going to look into, if let's say there is a tie in the uh, priority, then they are going to look for a highest MAC address. Okay, so assuming that router one have a highest uh, MAC address, so you will become the DIS. All right, so pretty simple. Now, assuming that now I'm going to change this guy from 0 to 120. Okay, so now you are going to make this guy as a DIS. Now, not the same as in OSPF, because in OSPF, if let's say this is a DR, even though you are going to change your priority to be highest, this guy will still belong to the DR because it's non preemption. In ISIS, it's preemption. So basically, uh, once you take over, you will take over immediately. All right, once you change your priority, it will take over immediately. Okay? All right, so to enable the ISIs, we need to enable what we call the NSAP addressing. Now, ISIs um, routing require this NSAP as mandatory. Now, NSAP is called Network Service Access Point. It's equivalent to uh, the address of a CLNP, and this enable our layer three. 
Okay, now the NSAID addressing are quite different compared to IP. Now, as you can see from here, IP we have W, X, Y, and Z. So this is 32 bit. Whereas if you compare to NSAID addressing, you notice that they have uh, two portion. One portion is a fixed, another portion, this portion is variable. Okay. So what I mean here is, if let's say you look into the uh, NSAP address, for example, our network entity will be similar like example here. This is a typical address on the network entity. Now, the one byte be behind here, we call uh, SEL, or uh, Network Selector. This referring to the intermediate system router. All right, it's fixed at zero, zero. And you notice this part here, this is my system ID. So the system ID is fixed for six bytes. So we have one byte here, two byte, three byte, four byte, five and six byte so this portion is fixed but this is a portion that is variable all right this is similar to our area id or in this case our network so here i have a one byte two byte and three byte minimum will be one byte okay so minimum for our area id is one byte okay and the maximum will be 13 byte so in conclusion if let's say you look into our NSAP, all right so we have our minimum of the NSAP address. If we add up all together, so we have one byte plus six byte plus one byte, we have eight byte. And the maximum that we have is 13 byte plus six byte plus one byte. That will give us 20 byte. Now that, is, that leads us into one complication. Now since the NSAP address is variable, how do you know that the NSAP address, uh, which portion is our network portion and which portion is our system portion. Now please remember that this portion is fixed and this portion is variable. So when you read your NSAP address, you have to read it from right hand side to your left hand side. So that means that this one is fixed already. So we have our six byte. So this portion will be your system ID. Any portion in front will be your network ID. Okay. Now in ISIS, we run what we call the ISIS PDU, okay, or Protocol Data Unit for ISIS. ISIS run on level one, as I mentioned, and level two. Now level one, level two, if you run on the broadcast network, okay, uh, they will use IIHL1 and IIHL2. Now the IIHL1 and IIHL2 have a reserved MAC address. The MAC address of the uh, level 1 will be 01 minus 80 C2 00 00 14. Okay, so this is L1. And the well known MAC address of L2 is 01 80 C2 00 00 15. That is an L2. Now, uh, these are multicast MAC address. Now, if you are going to change from the uh, broadcast network to point to point, the well-known MAC address will be 09 is still a multicast, 00 to B, 00, 00, 05. Okay, so if you are using a point to point, uh, the hello will be using this well-known address and if you are using a LAN base or in this case a broadcast base you are going to look into these two MAC address. Now LSP is used to exchange the link state information so we have uh, L1 LSP and the, we also have uh, L2 LSP. Now SNP or what we call the uh, sequence network PDU are used to maintain LSDB integrity and synchronization. So when they do synchronization, they are using SMP to synchronize. So we have the, uh, uh, what we call the uh, synchronization that is actually look into the ID of your LSDB. So the SMP contain CSNP and PSNP. CSNP stands for complete sequence network protocol and PSMP is partial. 
partial sequence network protocol. Now this too is used for you to advertise uh, the uh, LSP as well as for you to do acknowledgement of the LSP. Okay, so later we are going to use the uh, Wireshark and Shark how this uh, PSMP and CSMP work. So if let's say you are using the uh, point to point, you're able to see the PSMP, all right, that is used for acknowledgement, as well as the CSMP that's used for the LSDB synchronization. All right, so we are going to look at that later part. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.